My honor and pleasure to be here with Rabbi Mark Gittler, who is the founder of Fast for Feast. Can you tell us a little bit about how this project works? Thanks, Shmuel. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. So just imagine it's six o'clock on Tisha B'Av or Yom Kippur. The hunger pangs are in there. You want to pray, but you're looking at the clock, wondering when's this day going to be over, when I'm going to go over to my friend's house to whatever it is that you generally and regularly eat to break a fast. And you think about for a moment, think about a one mile radius around you or a five mile radius around you and think about, are there 10, are there 100, are there 1,000 people in this radius around you who may not be as hungry as you are right now, but who face hunger regularly? That is part and parcel of what a fast day is. It's a day when a person should recognize the gift of the world, their mortality, that destruction can come. The Jewish fast days are based on events of destruction, the laying siege to the walls of Jerusalem, the breaching of the walls, the destruction of the, the temple, and the destruction, the death of thousands that resulted as a, during those terrible events. Mm -hmm. And so at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. or 2 p.m. or whatever time it is, when you're thinking about, I might be hungry, but there are so many people who regularly face hunger, that's the idea of Fast for Feast. The idea of Fast for Feast is to bring up a consciousness because that's what a fast day is about the world around you, whether it be your Jewish brothers, whether it be other people, and to make a contribution to transform your fast into a feast. Um, the idea of Fast for Feast is an ancient idea. It really begins on Yom Kippur morning. Everybody knows the great honor on Yom Kippur in many synagogues is to read the book of Yonah. And we talk about Jonah and he's swallowed up by a whale or a fish. But the morning Haftorah, the selection from the prophets in the morning, is taken from Isaiah. And Isaiah speaks, he, it's, a, it's a funny Haftorah. He mocks the Jewish people and he says, he's pretending he's the Jewish people and, and he goes to God and he says, God, you tell me to fast, and we fasted. But still, life is not good, and things are bad, and the enemies are all around, so why is this happening? And we fast, and we cry out, and we beseech you. You know, we go to Shul, and we daven. That's what he says. And Yeshaya answers back from God to the Jewish people, where he says, what you have to do is share your bread with the hungry. I don't care about your fasting. I don't care if you're going to fast, but then you're going to be treat your workers improperly. You have to break the shackles in terms of the way that you treat people. And so this idea was so important to the rabbis that this is the Haftorah on Yom Kippur morning, according to many, the most important day in the Jewish year, that we need to have and understand the idea that a fast day is supposed to lead us to sharing the bread with another. So in today's day and age, it doesn't necessarily mean inviting over somebody for a Shabbos meal. What it means is, is contributing a number of a dollars, shkalev, whatever it might be, pesos, to somebody who is a need, to somebody who regularly faces the, the idea. Who, who are the hungry who get fed through the project? So the way Fast for Feast works is that we take the money and we divide it between Israel and local organizations. Beautiful. So we're here Beautiful. in sunny Phoenix cool. and We've uh, donated money in the past from people in the Phoenix Scottsdale area to a local, to the JFS, to the Just Three right. Hunger Campaign, I think it's called, or Just Three Foods. Just Three Things. And then half of it is sent off to Israel uh, and, and feeds the hungry through, through Leket. And the whole idea is we're not looking for somebody to send us $5,000 or $10,000 or $20,000. God bless you if you want to. Yeah. What we're trying to do is, and the, really the best... Um, the best description of the idea comes from a Polish rabbi known as the Maharshal, or Shlomo Luria, who writes that on a fast day, a person should calculate the amount of money that they saved, and they should take that money and donate it to charity. Mm -hmm. We have this little gimmick on our website where you can go in if you were going to have chicken for lunch, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, yeah, if right. you were going to yeah. have 
you know, uh, Starbucks, right, you know, right. I, I don't have 48,000 different yeah, things yeah. at Starbucks right, on there. Right, right. And this way, if you want to be a literalist, you right. can calculate, okay, I would have spent $42.24 or wow. $16.17. Wow. Yeah. But, but the idea is generally, I was going to spend $15 on food. I'm not spending $15 on food. I know you hear lots of commercials about funding your 401k and your IRA. Right, IRA. Right. So this is $15 that are, shouldn't go into your right. IRA. They should go to the guy down the street yeah. who, who unfortunately lost his job and his family doesn't have the means to, to have proper food on their table for Shabbos or, you know, whoever it might be. That, that's, that's the whole idea. And it's, we try to think that it's an empowering idea. Right. That your fast is, is not just about crying out about an event that happened 2,000 years ago. But if the Midrash says, you know, uh, every year, what, I was taught back in grade school when I was a kid, like you do a mitzvah and it's like a brick is put onto the sort of the idea of a Beit HaMikdash is being built. Here we have, we fasted, we didn't eat, but a tangible, out, where's the tangible outcome? Right. This right. is the opportunity for a tangible outcome, $10, $18, $25, $36, yeah. the most meaningful yeah. donations that yeah. we've gotten are people uh, say publicly, Benji Schiller, who's a Musmach yeah. of Chovevei, right. right. he sent me an, a donation in a couple of years ago, and then he sent in a second donation. And I said, I, I wrote back to him, Benji, I know for 25 years, I said, Benji, why'd you write in a second donation? He said, well, I told your da my daughters about this, and we went through our garage today, it was on Tisha B'Av, and we gathered all the old cans or yeah. something, right. and we brought it and, and got, you know, for, you know, I guess five cents a can where I live. I don't know if they do that where you live yeah. anymore. And so this is like the $10 and 25 cents wow. from their cans. Wow. To me, that's just so beautiful. They no. want to do something good for the world, right. good for society. So there's so many wonderful, simple ways, meaningful acts that, that people can do. And I hope those who are watching this is, you know, we come to a fast day, uh, Tani Esther before Purim will, will come and will masquerade and rejoice and send gifts to friends on Purim and the day before is, is a fast day. And so on that day before, whether you're fasting or not fasting, is an opportunity to just for a moment say, there's somebody who's gonna be hungry on Purim. Right. There's right. somebody who's gonna be hungry right. after Purim. There's somebody's, right. and, and my $20 or whatever it might be can go and right. provide meals for those people. Beautiful. The uh, Shulchan Aruch says, as you know, uh, the code of Jewish law that if someone comes and they ask for clothes, you have to check them out. Like, do they really need this? But if they ask for food, you give immediately. There's a sense that of the dire need of hunger, um, but also that it's not just a physical need. There's also a, a deep dignity uh, uh, you know, element to this, of being able to feed yourself, feed your family. And I think what's one of the many beautiful aspects of what you're doing, philosophically, a fast in many ways, and in a good way, is self-absorbing. Meaning you're really focused inwards, you're introspective, it's, you're doing teshuvah, you're repenting. But you're saying that self, that self-reflection has to actually, you have to transcend that. It has to go into it to an other consciousness. Right? You go into, you feel hunger and it makes you reflect on yourself and your life, but then you have to become aware of the other as well. And like, that's a real chidush, it's a real insight. You know that that you're bringing from our tradition. I think you're the one bringing yeah. it. I might no. be trying to help bring it about. <laughs> and then I think practically, I mean, whenever I've had the the blessing to be able to contribute small amounts to this, it deeply enriches the spirituality of the day for me. When I feel like what this is about is it's a chesed, it's a kindness, it's but it's more than that. It's an obligation. Uh, it's very enriching. So really, kol kavod. I mean, you're doing heroic work to to um, help us be aware of this and not just be aware of it, to really respond to this, this need of hunger. So make sure you go on to Fast for Feast, Tani Tester, right? This, this fast day, whatever fast day is coming up, or if you take on a personal fast, uh, if, if people still do that. Um, when you take on a fast, <laughs> the it's- The doctors so say it's good to fast twice a week. Uh, I, am, I have not been doing that. <laughs> or, you know, maybe you have to fast before, and I don't know if you ever got this one, you have to fast before uh, your lab work. You have some lab work. You fast before your lab work. So really, tis chulim is vote and uh, continue the Thank great you, work. Thank you, Rav Shmuley. Uh, fast Pleasure for feast to be here. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. Check it out. Thank you so much.